It is certainly not unheard of for a young girl to wake up in the middle of the night, looking for a glass of water. It is somewhat more exceptional when this late night water run results in many, many deaths. Unless, of course, you're dealing with a very special young girl. SCP-053, also known as, well, the young girl. She possesses the innate ability to inspire delusions, paranoia, and eventually homicidal rage in anyone who spends too long around her. Which, as you can probably imagine, makes it hard to live a normal life. One night, the young girl woke up to something incredibly strange. The door of her cell, typically tightly sealed, was wide open, and a strange flashing red light was shining in through the hallway. The sound of a distant alarm is what had woken her up. What the young girl didn't know was that the sight confining her had just experienced a mass containment breach as a result of a major electrical malfunction. Some of the most terrifying creatures imaginable were roaming the halls in search of violence and carnage. But when the young girl got up and wandered out of her bedroom, she only wanted a glass of water to quench her midnight thirst. She wandered down a long, plain hallway, washed intermittently and red by the red flashing emergency lights. She rubbed the sleep out of her eyes and yawned, all this strange commotion. Maybe she's just having a bad dream. But what seems like a bad dream to her is a bona fide living nightmare for everyone around her. A few halls over, security personnel were being devoured alive by SCP-682. SCP-106, the old man, had just dragged a senior researcher into his pocket dimension to do unspeakable things to him. And a group of terrified admin staff are being lured out by what they think is a group of mobile task force operatives, but is actually a pack of hungry SCP-939 imitating their voices. Still, the young girl persisted in her quest for a refreshing drink, even as security personnel began to fan out through the building, hoping to get control over this rapidly devolving situation. A group of five armed security officers ran into the hallway and attempted to intercept the young girl, but the high stress they were feeling was only accelerated by the effects of the young girl's anomalous powers. They started to feel bugs crawling all over their skin. They started to get the sense that their fellow security officers weren't even people, but monsters wearing human skin suits. Their paranoia soon evolved into a blistering rage. Each of the men pulled out their guns and began firing at each other until only one was left standing, wounded but alive. With all the others dead, the object of his rage now became the young girl herself. He understood then that it was all her doing that she made him do this. She was a monstrous little creature who took pleasure in twisting the minds of human beings into terrible forms. In reality, the young girl had no such feelings. Her powers were passive. She had no control over them. She even suffered from some kind of strange mental block that left her completely unaware that her powers were even taking effect. She was, in a sense, completely innocent. As the security officer pointed his gun at the young girl as she began walking into a nearby break room, he experienced her secondary anomalous effect. Anyone who attempts to hurt her will immediately die from either a heart attack or a stroke. The security officer suddenly felt an intense pain, sharp and brutal, exploding in his chest. He collapsed, dead before he even hit the ground, and the young girl had no idea. She couldn't if she tried. In the break room, the young girl found exactly what she was looking for, a classic office water cooler, complete with a stack of plastic cups. Perfect. She carefully took one of the cups and pulled down the lever on the cooler. Watching her cup fill as the tank above the cooler bubbled, she took a sip, cool, refreshing spring water, just what the doctor ordered. But the young girl suddenly looked up, shocked, to see that the tank above the water cooler was now shaking violently, as though it was going to explode. What was going on here? Had she broken it? She stepped back, dropping the rest of her cup of water to the ground. She felt frightened. That's when a crack formed in the plastic tank and the water began slithering out, not dripping or pouring, slithering as though it had moved with mind and purpose. And that's because in this case, it did. The young girl hadn't just drank any water. She had drunk half a cup of water from SCP-054, the water nymph, a mysterious sentient woman made entirely from water. Much like the young girl, the water nymph is often a misunderstood anomaly, one that has received far more harm from the cruel treatment of the SCP Foundation than she's ever given to another. 
She's a naturally curious and compassionate creature whose trust has been abused. So when the contained breach alarm started to sound, much like the rest of the Foundation staff, she had tried to hide and find cover, not wanting to fall into the crosshairs of a far more dangerous and hostile anomaly. She had chosen the water cooler in break room 3, which seemed like a genius idea, until the young girl turned up. After years of being experimented on by Foundation researchers, the water nymph wasn't just about to tolerate more mistreatment. Whatever this strange little creature was who had just consumed some of her body, the water nymph would fight back and make it regret ever thinking that it could take advantage of her. The young girl, who really had just made an innocent mistake, began to panic and run as frightening, slithering tendrils of pure water came slithering after her. As the unfortunate security guard discovered earlier, trying to attack the young girl was typically a one-way ticket to a heart attack or fatal cerebral event. But seeing as the water nymph had neither a heart nor a brain, she was invulnerable, and the young girl was terrified. She ran out of the room, past the bodies of the men who had killed each other due to her influence outside. She wasn't even able to notice them. She kept running, and the water of the water nymph came slithering after her. The water nymph had never been the vengeful type, but after the abuse she'd suffered, she learned the value of putting her liquid foot down. She would not tolerate mistreatment even from a being this small. The young girl kept running, breathing heavily. Because of the nature of her anomalous abilities, nobody could intervene and help her. Occasionally, she had run into groups of Foundation personnel trying to fight their way through the chaos, only to be anomalously affected and become part of the chaos themselves. They became violent, deranged monsters and started attacking each other, punching and biting. As they fell to the ground in a brawling pile, the young girl had to desperately climb over them as the streak of furious liquid followed her. Meanwhile, across the facility, the vicious, psychopathic old man was hungry for more. His mouth stretched into a wide, sadistic grin, and he continued walking further into the base. He would find new victims. He would feel their fear and drink in their dying screams. Several mobile task forces were dispatched from other nearby containment facilities. They'd likely reach the embattled site within the hour, but how many lives would be lost before then? The death count was already well into the double digits. After all this running, the young girl was getting tired. It was rare that she needed to truly avoid and escape a threat like this, and as such, she wasn't exactly prepared for such a scenario. She found her way into a broom closet and locked herself inside. Hiding among mops and brooms, she tried to quiet her breathing, holding a tiny hand over her mouth. Red flashes continued to occasionally illuminate the corners of the door. She breathed in and out, in and out. Was something waiting outside? The young girl gasped as water started bubbling underneath the door. It started looking around her feet, then rising up from the ground. To the young girl, it was astonishing. The water was forming the shape of a woman standing right in front of her. Her lower lip trembled with fear. For a moment, she was at a loss for words. Then she gulped dryly and began to speak in a soft little voice. I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to hurt you, I promise, I was just thirsty. The water nymph tilted her head slightly, confused. Did this tiny child really mean this? Was it an honest mistake? After all the terrible things that had been done to her, the water nymph had difficulty trusting humans. But as the young girl started to cry for reasons she couldn't quite understand, the water nymph felt the urge to comfort her. Perhaps she wasn't with the Foundation. Perhaps this girl was just another prisoner. They were allies, not enemies. While the water nymph couldn't speak, as a show of solidarity, she began to transform. She got smaller, herself becoming a little girl made of water, almost mirroring SCP-053. She raised a hand and waved. The young girl giggled, seemingly put at ease. It'd been a long time since she met a new friend around here, and it seemed like the water nymph was ready to change that. Maybe they could escape this place together. The young girl opened the door and the two of them ran out together, passing through an adjacent hallway. The young girl ran while the water nymph slithered formlessly along behind her. They managed to sneak around and avoid detection from the many anomalies and Foundation guards duking it out for supremacy in the chaotic halls of the facility. In a sense, it provided the perfect cover for the unlikely duo to escape this bizarre situation, but they weren't out of the metaphorical woods yet. First, they were cornered by a trio of paranoid guards, all wielding handguns. However, the young girl's nightmarish ambient ability came in handy once more, 
the three men lost their minds and started killing each other, giving the young girl and the water nymph more time to escape and keep moving, though they were about to encounter the deadliest threat of all. The young girl took point, leading the water nymph down the nearest hallway, when suddenly, SCP-106, the old man, emerged from the wall right in front of her. He had such anomalous malice in him that the young girl's powers was effectively useless against him. He grinned and approached her, his arms extended, ready to ferry her off to the nightmare of his pocket dimension. The young girl had never felt so afraid, until suddenly, the water nymph slithered in between them, and she assumed her full humanoid form once more, forming a wall between the young girl and the old man. This turned out to be the perfect way to save the young girl's life. SCP-106 has historically found liquid barriers incredibly confusing, and it's been widely considered to be one of the few ways to effectively delay the old man's rampages. Seizing the moment, the young girl turned and ran away. The water nymph had just saved her life. Sadly for them, neither the water nymph nor the young girl escaped that day. The mobile task forces arrived and took control of the facility again, recontaining the various anomalies who had escaped, but even if they never saw each other again, the water nymph and the young girl would forever remember how they helped each other on that incredibly strange day. Now go check out SCP-053 Young Girl and SCP-054 Water Nymph for more of today's anomalies.